Yay! Impact learning is for everybody. Well, yeah. So it's more. So it's fun when other kids suffer, but not when you suffer. I like it. All right, we're good there. Book report is due tomorrow. We're gonna deal with irony today. Irony is uh, interesting. Uh, if you, it's one of those things. It's like math. You either get it sometimes or you don't. And with irony, there's every chance we'll spend a half hour going over it. And at the end, you'll go, nope. Uh, and those of you guys are like. Pfft. Easy word, and so we'll just find out, and we'll try to beat it into you as best we can. Uh, bring your big literature book tomorrow, and we'll run through it and do our my irony stuff for here. Irony, just the use of words to express something that's opposite of the intended or the literal meaning. And then situational irony is any time that you have a situation where it's the opposite of what you expect. Irony is dealing with the opposites. Uh, there's also what's called verbal irony, and verbal irony is where you say the opposite of what you mean. Does that mean like opposite day when you go opposite day? I hate you. No, that's just being a kid. Uh, there's an example of uh, verbal irony where you tell someone the opposite of what you mean. You guys know the most basic form of verbal irony? Font? Sarcasm. Sarcasm. Anytime that you are sarcastic, that is verbal irony. The problem with verbal irony is it only works if someone understands irony. Because if you screw up and I go, hey, good job, slick, and you understand irony, you're like, oh, you're insulting me. You mean the opposite of that. The problem is, you have the people who don't understand it, and you're like, oh, really? Thanks! And you're like, no, I was making fun of you. What? You said good job. And you're like, oh. And, you, and so you have to make sure that you, it's all in your voice and flex, and that's where the verbal irony comes in. Um, I use sarcasm all the time uh, as a building block to make you a better person, uh, because I, I break you down to build you up. Or at least that's what I tell myself. On here, though, we're going to take a look at what's called uh, situational irony. And so what we're going to do is take a look at the first one, what a fireman does. And so the expected result, what you expect a fireman to be able to do. So, um, fight fires. works for me. Uh, stop fires, fight fires, put out fires. It would be ironic, then, if we were to see the opposite of that. Chloe? To commit arson. Nice one. On. If you have a fireman that is being convicted of arson, would definitely qualify, qualify as that. Or if you were to see a fireman who suddenly caught on fire, uh, and is like running around, and like, oh, I'm on fire. You're like, ooh, that's ironic. Or if you see a fire station that, catches on fire. That would be ironic, because that's the opposite of ooh, what you would expect. Gabby? Wouldn't it not be ironic for the fireman to be on fire? Because, like, they go... No, it'd be, it depends. Like, if he's running out of the building on fire, that's not ironic. Yeah. If you just saw, like, a fireman, like, in the middle of town, all the time, he's like, ah, and he caught on fire. That'd be ironic. <laughs> so that's what. Now, you also notice a lot of times with ironic situations, they make you giggle, uh, which is fine. One, it's because um, you're horrible people and you like pain. Uh, and two, <laughs> it's why you see a lot of comics will use irony. So you see comic strips will deal with irony because they make you. It's that juxtaposition of the opposite of what you see. It just hits that little thing and they go like, <laughs> giggles. And it just sort of like taps that. It's like, it's okay. And you're an awful person, Billy. Uh, the next one, what a dare officer does. Uh, what is the, the main job of, you guys know what a dare officer is? What do they tase people? What kind of dare officer are you going to hate? Fawn? They tell kids not to do drugs. Nicely done. They say don't do drugs, or they tase you. Apparently if they find you doing drugs, uh, then that's good for you. And the opposite of what we would expect, little? Um, them doing drugs. Nicely done. If you were like after the dare thing, and you go out back, and the dare officer like, Oh, that was rough, those kids. And he's out there smoking, or if he gets like a DUI, that would be the opposite. That would be ironic, because you don't expect them to get arrested for drinking, or to be out back smoking out or something like that. Um, what a dentist does, Luke? Clean your teeth. Nice one. Be able to prevent cavities. Now, someone's like, well, Mr. Kodak, what if they were to go around and, and give you cavities? Well, that would be kind of ironic, but you're on the right track. Brown? Um, they, like, get toothpaste, like, they clean their mouth with. They put the grease on it. And they just go, like... Not ironic. So, like, that would just be strange. <laughs> but you're on the right track. It, 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 Lamb? Them getting oral cancer. If they... <laughs> wow, you went straight for the dark side. But, yes, I was going to just go with bad teeth. But you just want to kill off the dentist. I guess that or two. But the idea of them having bad teeth. The last person you'd expect to have bad teeth would be a dentist. The problem we're going to get when we get into irony is a lot of times you come up with an example that'll be close but not quite ironic. And be like, you're on the right track, but it's not. 
But it doesn't mean you're doing it horribly wrong. It's just irony is a fine line. And sometimes you have to hit it correctly. And oftentimes, even between like Mr. Sturge and Janice and I, English teachers, we'll have to come and ask each other, is this irony or is it just a bad situation? You're like, oh, it's more of a bad situation. And so sometimes it's just one of those tough things that go into it. Gabby? Do you know what's ironic? Uh, yes, right up there. That's ironic. We no. find it. Have you heard the song, Isn't It Ironic? Yeah, we're going to talk about that in a minute. Oh, again? And then yeah. what an English teacher does. What is an English teacher supposed to? Well, in this class, it, well, not using this class. <laughs> Bella? Teaches English. Nice, well done. Teaches words. So it'd be ironic if you had an English teacher. Whitney? An uh, English teacher who didn't know the words. Works for me. I was going to say the idea that I can't spell words. Or if you had an English teacher that came in here and was a foreign speaker and couldn't speak English very well. Uh, and he was like, uh, parlez vous français? And you're like, what? And you're like, in anglais class. And you're like, what? And that would not work. And you're like, well, that's kind of ironic. You hired a French teacher. And so that would be the same idea. Hello, then, for your two examples of situational irony, we're going to come back to those. So hold on to them. That's what we need to come back to at the end. Because my goal, we're going to try and teach you some more irony and give you examples. And then you're going to look back at yours and go, what was I think? And then I have to change my life. Boom, nailed it. So we're going to find out how smart you are here in just a moment. Um, first off, did we finish all of these notes? Yes. yes. Good. My other classes did this. So we're running through. Then, uh, since you guys can't see them, uh, figurative language. What's the definition of figurative language? Without being able to flip back and look because that'd be cheating. And some people were gone yesterday, so I need to write these down quickly. And, and, yay! Raleigh was figurative language. It has to do with an idiom. You're correct. There's two different definitions. Figurative and literal. What does the figurative one mean? Close. The opposite of that would be? Um, common. Nicely done. And that's where the common everyday meaning of a phrase comes in. And you had to make sure you connected it to your idiom in some way, especially the one that you wrote down. If figurative is going to be number eight, uh, then Bevan was number nine. Um, literal. Literal. And what's literal definition mean? Um, it's the word by word meaning. Nicely done. There's nice and probably to give away if you don't know. The word for word meaning of a phrase. Once again, going back to your idiom, you had to give us the word for word meaning of that one. And then Grace, you have to move on. So if you need to, you can grab my notebook over there. It has all the stuff in there. It'll solve it for you. You can take your shield there. We'll exchange. It'll be wonderful. Number 10 10 was alliteration. And Sklar, what is alliteration? Um, it's when all the same, all the um, words have the same consonant. Nicely done. Multiple words starting with the same consonant. And then you have a dear example. Uh, Matt makes monkeys mud pies, something along those lines. Uh, Johnny jumps over Joey while jogging. That brings us to assonance, uh, alliteration's uh, ugly cousin. And Chloe, what is assonance? Um, oh, it's multiple words in a row starting with the same vowel. Nicely done. And then hopefully you know the difference between your consonants and vowels, or it'll be a long year. The vowels, the A, E, I, O, U, Y can work. It starts off with that beginning sound. And then the same thing with your examples from there. So then make sure you guys have those down into your notebook and you should be good to go. That was more for the recording at home. People, in case they were gone yesterday, blah, 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 words. All right. Uh, we not do what? What? Did, did jump backwards? <laughs> machine, I hate you so much. All right, now back to irony and, and machine and the issues. I'm going to give you examples of the first half of an ironic situation, and we're going to see if you can figure out the other half of the situation. As an example, the Made in China stickers. Uh, two parts of it, if you've never seen them, there's a little, little sticker like that that says Made in China. Well, the first part was, this was an actual, these are all ones that I thought of, and this one came from where I found the Made in China sticker. And it was the last place I would ever expect to find a Made in China sticker. And I was like, oh, that's ironic. And I got all excited when I found it. Scully? It was American It was. Fourth of July. And my daughter was trying to pray. And it was on all the little flags, like those little ones about that tall. And on the little sticks, it had little Made in China stickers on them. And I was just like, oh. And it was the fact that that Made in China sticker was on an American flag. That's ironic. And then I realized we go even deeper and let's say we find out something about the Made in China stickers and the factory that makes them. And then wouldn't it be ironic, Omni? If they were made in America. Nicely done. If like those Made in China stickers came from a factory made in America, uh, and then we had to ship the stickers over there, and they put them on. I was like, oh, no. I know so many levels of ironic in the is so, 
So that should have struck me on that one. Next up, the CEO of Chevrolet. Okay, we figure the ironic situation that would connect to that one. Chloe? Drives a Bentley. Works for me. Drives a Bentley. I was going to go for even more ironic than that because Bentley is a nice car. Maybe they drives would drive. Drives a Honda. Uh, nice yeah, Honda. I was on the line. I was thinking Ford, but Honda would definitely work for me. Not even do American, but to go Ford. Would yeah, the CEO of a big company drive a better car than a Ford? A Ford's wow. a good. Are you, are you hating on Ford? No, like, but I'm just wow. saying that's Jesus. like. Wouldn't they drive like a Bentley or something? A Prowler? Yeah. Probably not. I was going on ironic, not going for, you know, how much money they make and making a statement well, about the economic issues of the world. Well, it's not as ironic if it's a Ford. <laughs> Mr. Barovia. Wouldn't it be even more ironic, though, if they didn't even drive a car? If they didn't have a driver's license? That would work also. It'd be ironic if they didn't have a driver's license? I can roll with that. Grant? If they got in a car crash? Not ironic. That that's is just that's just he doesn't like. That's ironic because they're. That's not ironic. Of a car right. right. And then they crash. Okay. Now, it'd be ironic if he got into a car crash and then died because the seatbelt didn't work. And he was a proponent of the fact that you should not wear seatbelts and seatbelts are going to hurt you and seatbelts are the worst thing in the world. And then he that gets into a car that. wreck and then he dies and he didn't wear a seatbelt. You'd be like, did he die? He said, no. That's ironic. Or the fact that he had his seatbelt on. Uh, you, you have someone who always says, you should always wear your seatbelts because they're going to save you, and seatbelts save lives. And then they get into a car wreck, and their seatbelt is on, and what happens to them? Exactly. Yeah. That'd be ironic. He's like, I, don't, I can't get it. Blah, 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 and they die. And you're like, you just had your seatbelt on. And so, I know, this is fine. Employees of Microsoft. If you find out someone who works at Microsoft. Matt? He's in Mac. Nice with the idea of them using a Macintosh. That'd be ironic because they work for it. You know, the whole Microsoft thing, stuff like that. Um, ah, uh, real life examples. I've had students named Joy and I've had a student named Delight. Uh, and both of them were examples of uh, irony that I had to point out to them at the time, although I think it went over their head because, well, they were just special, special people. Socks? One being really negative. Nicely done. Uh, and they were uh, Joy. Uh, was not friendly whatsoever. She was just that grumpy kid that sat. I don't know if it's just the, the drawback to naming a kid Joy, but she never smiled like the whole time she was in my class. Or how many times I cracked Joe, she would just stare at me. Um, and then Delight was just a bully. Uh, she was the kid that kept getting sent down to the office, like just randomly punching other girls in the hallways. So like, look at me, she just punch them. And I'm like, you know what your name means? Like, yeah. And I'm like, it means happy. She's like, what's your point? I'm like, none. Um, but we did get to. I mean, it was one of those things where in class, going over irony. And I was like, you know, examples of irony. And the kid pointed that out. They're like, what about delight? I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, uh, and I'm like, okay. Uh, but <laughs> it was educational, and we learned from it. So I was like, oh. oh um, MTV. Do you guys know what MTV stands for? Yeah. Omni? It's music television. And why is MTV now an example of irony? Because it doesn't show any music. Nicely done. Uh, way back when I was a kid, it was programmed by dinosaurs, uh, music television, MTV was all about music. And now it should be called RTV because it's all about reality TV and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, who wants to be a 16-year-old mother and drop out of school to the show or whatever. And so it's that same idea where MTV no longer actually shows things except for the MTV Music Awards once a year. I'm not sure that's enough to name the whole show. I put the whole channel after it. In, well, first of all, you have to know what an atheist is. Uh, but then it would be ironic if you were to see an atheist wearing something in particular. Bella? And what is an atheist? Somebody who doesn't believe in God. Nicely done. And so it would be ironic if you saw an atheist who was wearing uh, religious stuff like a cross. And once again, actual example of a friend of mine who was a, said they claimed they were an atheist and they wore the cross. Like, do you understand what that? Like, it's just pretty. And I'm like, okay. Uh, so it'd be rather ironic, I thought. The fact that we have a day called Labor Day, why is it ironic that we have a day called Labor Day? Gabby? Because, like, labor is, like, working. Nicely done. And, and how do we celebrate the day of work? Not working. Nicely done. And so the day, the day that's dedicated to working, we're like, yay, working day! Let's lay around. Uh, and so that's how we <laughs> celebrate Labor Day. You should um, get paid extra. Should. If you work there. Don't. Um, and which is, by the way, also connected. I have kids say, is that connected to like when my mom gave birth to me? Um, and it is. That's why it's called labor 
uh, when a, a, a mommy pushes out the baby is because apparently it's not an easy thing. You don't just wake up like, oh, baby. Uh, there's lots of like, and, it's, and that's what like, I was in labor for five days, or have a long day scream at you. And so it's the same thing, it's because it's work. Ah, we get to a unit uh, later this year, and I always find it ironic that I get to this point, and my talking kids seem to have the biggest issue with this unit. And I try to point out the irony to them, but it sometimes fails. Chloe? When they hate to give speeches. Yeah. We have a speech unit that comes up uh, in January and February where you guys get to stand up and give speeches. And for some reason, it's my kids that lose the most points for talking, hate speeches the most. I'm like, that's all you do. I, I know, when everyone's staring at me. I'm like, they're staring at you when you talk. I know, but it's different. And so I try to point out the irony of the fact that it should be the one thing that you do like. But every time, it's the kids that talk the most seem to hate standing up. You know, I should just make them stand up whenever they talk, but this is going to work that way either. Ah, once again, from an actual example that I saw was a Drive Carefully sticker. Uh, and the Drive Carefully sticker made me smile. Nick Scribbles? Guy flying 99 down the interstate. Nicely done. Uh, it wasn't the one I saw, but that would work. I mean, the same idea if the guy was like speeding and you saw the Drive Carefully sticker, uh, then that would definitely qualify in that area. Uh, Gabby? Like a basically like crushed car that's been like dented or something. And that's sort of what happened was I pulled up behind a car at a stoplight and they had a drive carefully sticker and it was like in the, the back of the rear bumper that was all smashed in and I tried to get closer to take a picture of it uh, and so I'm like, I have my camera phone out and I'm like trying to get closer to the back and then I realized, wouldn't it be ironic if I were to smash in the back of this car uh. trying to take a picture of their drive carefully sticker and they were, so I stopped and didn't get the picture. So I figured I would just use that as the example of the fact that they had a drive carefully sticker that was smashed into the whole back of their car. Keegan? Wouldn't it also be ironic if there was a drive carefully sticker on a car that was supposed to be crashed? Like, to test if it, test if it was safe? Be. Same idea. I also saw, uh, I think it's going to be a moment, um, uh, a sticker, it wasn't a sticker, it was those little yellow uh, little triangles rectangle well not triangle right? diamonds diamonds and it says like I love kids it's like a little little thing that hangs in the back uh, and another one that I tried to take a picture of and then decided it wasn't a good idea but I pulled up behind a car that had the I love kids thing hanging in the back window uh, and then it was an example of irony uh, the idea why it would be an example of irony and why I wanted to take a picture of it and then decided it was a bad idea Evan it was a black van <laughs> no, but I see where you're going with it. That would definitely be uh, much creepier than I had anticipated the white man, uh, the little kidnapping man. No, it was not. Then I would just try to run it off the road. Matt? <laughs> Close. It was uh, the windows were up, and there were two parents in the front seat who were smoking just nonstop. You could just see like the waves of smoke going against the back seat, and there were two kids like just sitting in like little strapped in seats, like their little hands against the wind, like. <laughs> going down the side today, they have the I love kids. I'm like, I don't think you know what the word love means. I think you love torturing. And so that's, once again, I tried to get a picture of it, and they looked at me, and it scared me. Uh, <laughs> I pull up next to a little thing, I'm getting ready to take a picture, and like, both are like, I'm like, eh, driving off. So I just make it go away. I figure I'll just explain it to you, Mr. as opposed to having crazy people to chase me down the highway. Yeah, it's time to tell you all this way. It was fun. Uh, the president of an airline. Now I will focus on that one. Keegan? Who's afraid of heights? Nicely done. Who is afraid of heights or something along those lines? Who doesn't want to fly? Uh, ooh, we had a teacher here at school whose name was Mrs. Music. And I thought it was ironic also with her. Bella? Nicely done. She was actually a science teacher. She went over to Riverside. Uh, but the fact that she would, And I asked her, I was like, can you sing? And she was like, nope, no. Not even a little bit. It's because she married a guy whose last name was Music. I don't think he could sing either, but the fact that your last name is Music and the, and the fact that she couldn't sing and was a science teacher, I found hilarious. So, um... Wait, wait, wait. The next one, you ready? Right, Fauntleroy. It'd be funny if she was deaf. Or, or, or funny she's... in a painful way, but yes, it'd be rather ironic. It would also be funny if she, she was tone deaf. Music and, and was, was deaf. Oh. Just like if your name was uh, Mr. Kind, uh, and you spent all your time yelling at kids, that might be rather <laughs> ironic. And it was Mr. Friendly, and all you just beat people. Do the same thing. <laughs> Grant? Wouldn't it be funny if Grumpy the Dwarf started being nice to people? Hilarious. 
Oh, I didn't. That was the car with the iHeart sticker on it. I didn't know if I had it coming up. I apparently I didn't put a separate one for that one. The designer of the Xbox. Uh, who? Little? Has a PS3. Nice. So that finds out they're playing on the PlayStation all the time. So that would be on the same thing, like the Microsoft and the, the, the Macintosh. Or thing. Nintendo. Uh, this one, we're going to take a look at what's called visual irony. And so you're going to have to try and figure out by looking at it where the irony lays. Uh, so you have to decide to figure out where our irony is. Yeah. <laughs> that one. Gabby? Yeah, I mean, it's like a... Uh, how to Train Your Dog CD, uh -huh. and the dog tore it up. Nicely done. It's a dog training DVD CD thing, and the dog chewed it up, and so I found a picture of that one. I was like, ooh, good stuff. And let's take a look at <laughs> Where's our irony on that one, Pop Roy? American Freedom Made in China. Yeah, exactly. It was, uh, it was a fireworks display, and the fireworks display was called American Freedom. But of course, they make fireworks in China, so it works out well. They make everything in China. Except children. <laughs> 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 so, what's the issue with this one, Keegan? So it, it, to be, you charge better than you're supposed You charge batteries, but you have to use other batteries to charge them. Nicely done. So, that's sort of that visual irony. And it says batteries not included. Exactly. So, you have to buy the batteries. So, it's one of those things like, what is the whole. Rather ironic if you were to try and use that one. And then. So we talked about it earlier. So, I figured I'd go ahead and show you the picture that goes along with it, but that would be the fire truck that's actually on fire. Rather, an example of irony. Kiss me. All right. Your term paper on, well, first of all, do you guys know what plagiarism is? Yeah. 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 Good. What's plagiarism been there? Copy someone's stuff and don't give them credit. Nice one. Copy someone's stuff, don't give them credit. Oh, I Your term paper on the growing problem of plagiarism in society is eye-opening, especially since it's the third time I've seen it. Oh, see oh. The irony in this one, um, Grant. He copied off two other people. About what? That exact paper. And what's the paper about? Plagiarism. Which is? Copying. Off of? Other people. Right, so he, the, he wrote a paper saying you should not copy off other people, but he didn't write it. He copied off of other people. And so that's where you get that irony on that one, too. That is very ironic. Uh, this one. Um, I found it. This was graffiti that I found written on the wall. Uh, and it's kind of hard to see. Ah, does it not show up? It says, uh, Jesus rules and you need Jesus, was the graffiti that was written on the wall. And I found it rather ironic. For those of you who are Christian, you should understand what Jesus preaches. And what would Jesus preach? Bevan? Be kind to your neighbor. And not? Vandalize their property. Exactly. So someone was writing on there, Jesus, I'm like, if it's the opposite of what he's saying. It's like saying graffiti sucks and you write it on someone's wall and then you're doing graffiti. And I found it rather ironic that apparently the person didn't understand how irony works, so it made me smile. Some people are just special. Um, we'll take a look at the poem in just a moment. You brought up the song by Alanis Morissette called uh, Isn't It Ironic a moment ago, which was one that I also enjoy and one that's not understood very well. The examples in the, po in the, the song by Alanis Morissette, Isn't It Ironic?, which says, uh, isn't it ironic when you know, you're afraid to fly and you fly and the plane crashes where all you need is a fork and you have a spoon or a black fly in your knife. All of those examples are not irony. Not a single example in the entire song called Isn't it Ironic are ironic. Which makes the song genius. Why does that make the song genius? If you have a call a song called Irony with no examples of irony throughout the entire thing, socks. Because it's supposed to be about irony, but it's not. Nothing's related to irony, so then the song's ironic because it's called Irony, even though nothing's called it. Is. That's what makes it such a beautiful thing. Is that if it's a song called Ironic with a bunch of examples, you'd expect them to be ironic, but none of them are ironic. You're like, but that's what I was. That's ironic. And so it's like that level of... The problem is, a lot of people don't understand irony. They teach that song as examples of irony, and they're not examples of irony, which just makes life fun. Grant! Would an example of irony be 
a student not showing up for their perfect attendance award? That would be an example of irony. Nicely done. If you had the perfect attendance award and didn't show up that day, nicely done. For this one, we'll take a look at a quick poem. Uh, you have a copy of it on there, but you don't have to look at it right now. We can just look at it up here. Where it goes through, it says, Five batty bats were hanging beneath the moon. Quiet, said the first. The witch is coming soon. She's green, said the second, with a purple pointy nose. Black boots, said the third, to cover up her ugly toes. Her broom, <coughs> said the fourth, can scratch you, that I know. I'm scared, said the fifth. I think we'd better go. Five batty bats escaped into the night. Dear me, said the witch. Now that's a scary sight. So, one, deals with Halloween, which just makes it awesome. But the question being, how does that qualify as our irony? Uh-huh. Oh, Follow They're calling the witch ugly, and then she's scared of them. Nice. Well, uh, the whole poem builds up the fact that she's the scary one, and at the very end we find out that she's scared of them. The opposite of expected. Binky Barnes. When recess starts, I feel afraid. There's this kid in second grade. I hear he sat on Tom O'Connor. If he sits on me, then I'm a goner. He looks for kids to squish and crunch. He said he'd find me after lunch. They say he likes to pulverize. Wish he'd pick on kids his size. Of course, there are no kids that big. I'll bet he snaps me like a twig. Oh, no, he's coming over here. I think I'm sick. I think I'm sick. He sees me now. He's almost here. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Uh-oh, he's standing next to me. Should I even try to flee? I'd better pray. What did you say? So this whole thing, we're building up that this kid is what kind of a person? A bully. And it'd be ironic if? He wasn't. Was. And that's when you have, nice. you want to nice. play? Nice. Well, gee, okay. I think he wants to be my friend. Too bad recess has to end. So the whole thing, you're building up that this Binky Barnes is going to be a bully. And it turns out it's just the opposite. And just no one understands him. And it makes him feel sad. What's due tomorrow? Book report. Book report. Nice. Book report. What do you have to bring tomorrow? Big book. Your big book. There is one more poem that you're going to have to read on your own. It's the Gacy at the back. And there'll be one you're going to have to get ready for from the test coming up next week. It's easy to understand, but it's beautiful when it comes to irony. So Gacy at the back, last one. You have to read all on your own.